<clears throat> so, so, so how you? are you? Blah blah blah. Who cares? <laughs> so All right, off. there's our intro. You can say. Cut off by asking me, Eddie. What did you get at Bevmo? Eddie, um, mm -hmm. did you go yeah. to Bevmo today? I did not yesterday. I went actually on Tuesday because I went to get my COVID booster. And, at Bevmo? Uh, no, at the CVS that was that shared the same parking lot. Okay. And I was, I was about an hour late because, first of all, I went to the wrong CVS. Then when I left the right CVS en route to the correct CVS, I realized that I forgot my shot card. So I turned oh. around and went back home. And an hour later, I arrived at the correct CVS and got my booster shot, number three. When that was over, I went and I looked for Old Peculiar at, uh, at BevMo, but they don't have English beers. So what they do have is... Uh, this is this is really tasty. If you if you all haven't tried it, forty three different liqueurs in one oh. bottle, and this will make love to your taste buds. It's wonderful. Do it. Yes. What's um, the ABV on that? I'm sorry. The ABV on that. ABV is thirty one percent. Just try it straight. You don't need to mix it with anything. If you mix it with something, mix it with coffee. Uh, but otherwise, it's it's just an experience in your mouth. It's wonderful. And this little pooch bottle, which I'm going to open in a second, just a little poochie of Gentleman Jack. And of course, why they call it Gentleman is they filter the white lightning twice rather than once. And that's not okay. like a single barrel, which is in my, you know. But the most, kind of the most surprising thing I got, which absolutely surprised me, and I haven't opened this, but you can get a little thing of this. I have seen that. I have never seen that. I'm a sucker. It's like, you know, it's like seeing the Kit Kats. And look at this. I am I feel privileged that I got this for 24 bucks. And I finally get to try what this is like. I don't have to spend $169 to $200. <laughs> no, yeah. To try this. I'm, I don't even like scotch. I'm not even, a, I mean, well, I was impressed with a scotch. It was a 12-year-old Glenn Livet. And uh, I was very, very impressed with that. It went down so absolutely smooth. And uh, yeah, I, I feel actually privileged that I got this at Beth Mo. So that's intriguing, intriguing. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little, see if I can test myself. Sure. Wait, what? <laughs> I guess I'll just hijack this episode with things that just kind of amuse me. Um, You're good. So to those listening, if you didn't uh, figure it out, so it's just me and Eddie, Zoom mode, nothing fancy, no soundboard. Uh, the only thing I'm, I'm getting that's kind of irritating me is when I start talking, you get your volume goes down. Are you getting that? Uh, I'm or maybe not vice versa. Vice versa. I kind of not now. No. Trying to figure out why. I hope I'm on. I'm on. I'm on headphones. But I got some of that uh, that sealer. Okay, so I'm going to try to pour myself. Like, and this could be new to our viewers. You know, one bartender to a former bartender. There I'm going to do a four count and then I'm going to test myself. Okay. So let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay. But we're not done. That's, I think that's kind of light. I, just, I think that's, that's a, a little shot. short. That's a little short. That's a little short. That's not a whole shot. That's why I, I'm, I'm on the reel over here. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, that's damn. Well, well, how many ounces Look is that? that? Huh? I, I'm going to assume it's an ounce. I assume it's an ounce, but there's my pour. Hey. I've always done yeah, an ounce. Yeah, I was half. on your side. I was like, I, I kind of poured that a little short. A little bit. So there's we. Oh shit! And I get it on my keyboard. All right. Ah, that Selfish. that just <laughs> unacceptable. Unacceptable. I'm not happy about that one. Should I like run away? Okay, no. Thank God I have a napkin. I got it all over my wrist guard. Well, working from home. Well, <laughs> so I have a question for you, Eddie. Yes. Since yes. You're, you're you're doing the liquor, uh, yes. I have a uh, to those at home. I'm not sure when we're going to post this, but we're recording this on the 11th, uh, Thursday of November, uh -huh. uh, uh, Veterans Day. It is indeed Veterans Day. And so yes, and so we got a call today at the bar. Uh, and this is if if you didn't know this, nine out of ten calls you get at a bar or restaurant are all dumb fucking people asking dumb questions. Wait, what, what's or being an example? Stupid. 
Well, what today, time do you close? <laughs> uh, what's on special? Well, we, we, there? In, in the past, I actually, I got a call one time. I shit you not. It was a, a woman who said straight up, she was like, oh, hey, so I just Googled you. What's your address? <laughs> I found, I found, thing. yeah, I found your phone number on Google. What's your address? And I was like, "Bitch." Um, no, so today, mm-hmm. I did not pick up this phone call, but um, my bartender told me what the conversation was. Uh, mm-hmm. Veterans Day, and I actually kind of want your opinion on this too. So she calls mm-hmm. and says, "Hey, are you doing any uh, specials for Veterans Day?" And uh, mm-hmm. the this bartender hasn't worked a previous Veterans Day, but generally speaking, what we do is uh, if you say you're a veteran, we'll get your first beer. Mm-hmm. Um, just a small thing. Much. That's awesome. Nothing crazy. Yeah. That's very cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's very and, cool. And if you're lying, you're a piece of shit and karma will get but you. You are. You are. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll even swallow that money because you're a piece of shit and karma will get you. Um, Amen. Yeah. So this woman asked, and the bartender really didn't know because first Veterans Day she worked. So she comes and talks to me in the office and she asks me what's going, like the special. I tell her, she goes back to the conversation. So she tells me the entire conversation. Apparently this woman's like, are you doing any specials? And she's like, I'm not really sure. Actually, we just opened up a minute ago. Let me find out for you. And apparently the woman was like, well, I don't want to be a bother. Like if you're not, if you don't have any specials, you'd have to create a special for me. And she said it was really like cunty. And she's like, no, ma'am. Like, no, like it's, it's fine. Let's, let me check. She's like, well, I just saw you guys posted like, you know, the, the 13 shots for the 13 soldiers. A lot of bars said that. And uh, mm-hmm. she's, I saw you did that on Memorial Day. I was just wondering if you had any specials for veterans, like, you know, like aren't dead. <laughs> and, and so she was like, OK, and that's when she came talk to me. And I guess she went back and told her what the special was. And she's like, do you guys just create that? Because I called. She's like, no, no, no. We've just done. We've always done that. It's just, I've never worked Veterans Day before. And she was like, uh-huh. OK, whatever. And it hung up. I, was, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just Karen. happy Veterans Day. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It was That's the complete wrong stories, way though. to do it. No, you're right. It was cunty in the first place. I mean, my question is, and there's never, ever an expectation. I ask, you know, do you do military? And sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is no. And it's out of respect. And I never absorb that. I never take advantage of it. Because what I, what I do personally is that the money that's comp to me, I put it back into the tip. So I never come out ahead. It's always easy. Perfect. It's always even. And it goes back um, to the server. I never, I never take an advantage out of that. Now, I, I, not everybody's like that. Some people and uh, you, have, um, <laughs> you have what I, uh, what's known as de, uh, dependas. And a dependa, uh, the, the full name for that is a dependipotamus. It's like somebody who, is, who marries somebody who's active duty. Mm. But of course, they assume their rank, even though they've never served a day. And then they have this entitlement complex. And that's what it sounds like uh, the person who contacted you over the phone. Because, you know, typically yeah. if you served in the military, you've done the work. And if, if, if people just, you know, want to give you a free packet of ketchup, that's very generous. <laughs> <laughs> compared to what you know those that have served uh you know have gone through so sure. it's, it's good it's amazing that uh, you guys at the Etiwanda Roadhouse will you know give a free beer to people who served and there and we'll take their word for it yeah you are going to have people who are disingenuous about it and you know that's yeah. always the case but you know it's the it's the spirit of it and yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, how we feel about it it just like it's one of those things like I, I don't mind the question like you said if you ask what you do for military but the whole we, so you did it for Memorial Day, but do you do anything for those that are alive? Like that, that, that fucking, <laughs> that condescending, like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I just, I was just kind of like, eh, this bitch, like, is this, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird call. It's a weird call. It would be. Yeah, that is a weird call. That is a weird call. And that's, by the way, it sounds, it, does, it doesn't sound like that person served in the military. Because they're entitled and. Yeah, the last thing you want to be in the military is special. That's that's so I've when Rob that, Gronkowski yeah. in his USAA commercial says I'm special, that's hilarious. So yeah. Thank you with the greatest all, but you get you get calls and, and stuff like that all the time, I bet. So yeah, a lot of weird people. So. Absolutely. So I actually um I, I actually developed a, a segment. No, get out of here. I don't want your cookies. I well, did, Mitch, I Mitch a has segment. a segment. I have a segment. You you I, should you have, have a, segment. a segment. Okay. Well, let's flip like coins and stuff. 
No, no. I mean, like I, I've created a segment. So now you created a segment. Let's... Yes. We both have segments. Yes. Okay. So I, I kind of want to go first. Go for it. And it's all about you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to attack you. I'm going right. after you and I'm getting real questions and I should go ahead and post where I'm getting these questions. I'm going to post this in our chat and I just closed that window. Didn't I? Did, I, I closed it anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, well, we're in case you guys didn't know this, we're recording on zoom. So, okay. So this segment is called who, and this is, this is not just for you. This is because you're in front of me. It's going to be mm -hmm. Glenny. What are you doing with your life? Oh, for there, I spent too much money <laughs> on these computer graphics and it's, it uh, looks like you spent a lot for that. that I, I uh... spent a lot went into it. <laughs> I lo I, a lot went into it. So I'm going to look here and this is, what is this? Uh, okay, so this is from Sky News. We had to go international and it just uh, highlights some of the strange news that's going on in the world. I'm also, I'm gonna go pull this off of NPR and UIP. They have got better articles. Okay, so I came across a couple and then I let them go because I went back. Um, okay, so Glennie, what are you doing with your life? A woman runs 95 marathons in 95 days, and she earned a Guinness Book of World Record. What are you doing with your life? I think I can say I drank 95 beers in the last 95 <laughs> days at least. That's a record. That deserves something as well. Yeah. woman buys 40 lottery tickets for, for one lottery drawing and wins $108,000. Huh. I guess so. She bought a hundred, like a hundred lines. She buys forty lottery tickets, forty tickets for one Sorry. lottery drawing. Okay. So yeah, you're right. Is that like ten dollars a shot? Is, so. Well, I mean, is that like one big ass ticket, like forty lines, or is that forty separate? It's okay. semantics. It doesn't matter. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna go in. I'm just gonna read. I'm not clicking on the article. It just says a Virginia woman who bought forty identical tickets. Oh goodness. Identical tickets. 40 identical tickets for the same lottery drawing ended up winning 40 times. She picked the same number. I get it now. Oh, damn. That, that woman needs to, to go to Vegas and start rolling dice. She needs to play the lottery or she's doing well, it right. It's amazing. Yeah. That is incredible. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, British chauffeur service offers ride and tank taxi. A tank? A tank. You show up in a tank. I was at I was at uh, Eric cool. Master Brewery. I can imagine the looks I would have gotten showing up in a tank. Yeah, that's respect. That Wonder how much that bill cost. Uh, Israeli archaeologists find ring believed to ward off hangovers in ancient winery. They found a what? Israeli archaeologists find ring believed to ward off hangovers in ancient winery. How do you know that that's what that did? That's what I'm, I was kind of confused, yeah. How, okay, so I'm only going to read the headline. Israeli archaeologists have discovered a ring in the ruins of an ancient wine factory that they believed was likely used to prevent hangovers. Or it could have been just, you know, so Mrs. Lipschitz has something nice to look to the winery. I don't know, <laughs> you know? All right, fine, yeah. Wow, a talisman to ward off, you know, you, you don't want to end hunger because, you know, there, there's no modern <laughs> medicine back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, 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 was, it was modern medicine back then. Yeah, here's It was their ring. modern medicine. <laughs> you have to afford that. And it's like a, per, it's like a gold ring with a, 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 it's a purple stone. I don't know what stones are, an amethyst? Those are, I don't know. I'm not a gemologist. Anyways. <laughs> what they're called? <laughs> Yeah, it's a gemologist. Yeah. <laughs> World's oldest conductor breaks his own record at 103. A 103 year old Florida man conducted the Air, U.S. Air Force Band of Airmen of Note at a Washington concert to break his own world. So he had it before. Okay, so what does that mean? You just like live another year and you break it? Yeah, That's, that. Okay. And, I lived. And, on. And, and hold on. Let's let's be honest for a second. I'm not <laughs> I'm not discrediting this man mm -hmm. for conducting. So at first, I actually for some reason imagined him like being the conductor on a train. But if he's conducting like an opera or a band or or you know an orchestra, 
-hmm. look, I was in band in middle school to conduct. <laughs> really? This is all you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're As, doing the beat. So, I mean, good for him, but I don't give a fuck. That's not, yeah. like, I'm not impressed. Who called up Guinness and said, Hey, this is, you guys got to get this guy. No, it's an air force <laughs> band. It's an, it's not the LA Philharmonic or some bullshit band. It's like the Air, the Force, air Force band, band. you know. <laughs> that Sorry. makes it worse. You Sorry, guys veterans. Get out here now. Sorry, veterans and Veterans Day, but like the Air Force band, <laughs> you know, they only take like, okay, who in this, who could fucking play anything? Yeah, yeah. There's a certain degree, <laughs> there's a certain modicum of talent, but yeah, it's it's not a bad gig. But then to be a conductor, it's like okay. I'm telling you right. This is something I swear right now. If I it will not happen, but if I happen to live to be 104 years old, mm -hmm. I'm going to save money to go fucking stand in front of an orchestra and move my hand around, and I'm going to take that record. You're going to break that record. Mm -hmm. You're going to break that record. Imagine that mm -hmm. Veterans Day story. Yeah, I just got <laughs> back from Afghanistan. Man, it was hairy. Whew. You know, our band conductor, he just turned 103, broke his second record. He still holds it. You guys believe that? Wow. Yeah, tell me more about Afghanistan. You know, it's like... <laughs> It's, I'm curious to know if that's like it's his birthday too. Like on his birthday, he okay, just does yeah, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on it and we're gonna find out and I'm gonna read the whole damn article. Okay, 103 year old well, Florida skin. man. You know, you know it's gone places. Florida man conducted the U.S. Air Force Band of Airmen of note of note at a Washington concert to break his own Guinness World Record as the oldest conductor. Frank Edmond of Cantonment initially set the record for the world's oldest conductor in May 2019 when he conducted Pensacola Civic Band at its Memorial Day concert at the age of 101. Edmund broke his own record Saturday night when he took stage in Washington, D.C. to conduct the U.S. Air Force Band of Airmen of Note in playing Glenn Miller's In the Mood. Good choice. The song was part of an American Veterans Center's Valor, American Valor, a salute to our heroes at the Omni Shoreham Hotel. Edmund joined the Navy as a musician and was aboard the USS Pennsylvania during uh, December 7th, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. Okay. That, that's the home run at the end. Okay. Everything. So now I'm an asshole. Now I'm an yeah, asshole. Yeah, you're yep. the right. <laughs> you're, Wow. Were you on a ship getting bombed? No. Wow. Uh, okay. I totally <laughs> trashed this man. <laughs> he was at Pearl Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I that, well, I'm getting so my karma now. Or he's coming after you. He's coming after you. Okay, well, wow. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Georgia judge banishes Elf on a shelf from his county. I'm fine with that. That thing's the creepiest thing I've seen. A Georgia judge issued a tongue-in-cheek order banishing Elf on the shelf on a recent Christmas tradition from his county. Tongue-in-cheek, fine. Tongue-in-cheek. It's an interesting. Okay, how long is it going to go on? I mean, how many things do you set that thing out in front of? And then it becomes, you know, oh, it's in front of a jack-o'-lantern. Woo, it's getting earlier and earlier every year, <laughs> isn't it? You know, how you're going to, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam is until 4th of July. Those crazy people. I mean, come on. I see. I'm starting to see Costco decorations and, and Labor Day. What's next? You know, it's. Oh, uh, yeah. Tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek. Anything. Tongue in cheek, fine. I would have been okay with banning Elf on the Shelf anyway. I think that's a, a dumb tradition. I think it's creepy. I think it's weird. Story anyway. shortage of women's preferred lottery ticket earns her two hundred thousand dollars. Wait, say that again. A store's shortage of women's preferred lottery ticket earns her two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and so the uh, the tag sentence is. A uh, North Carolina woman set a gas station out of being her preferred scratch off lottery ticket and her and and her backup choice led to her winning two hundred thousand dollar jackpot. Ah, oh, got it. OK, so she was going to one gas station. She stopped going there. She started going somewhere else and won immediately. Is that what um, I understand? Uh, I, I don't know the gas station, but it just says the gas station. I'm, I'm, I, I assume it's a regular gas station. Oh, there's sure. Gladys buying her, you know, buying, you know, Fat Cat again. Uh, they were out <laughs> of that. They were out of Fat Cat. They were out of oh. where the rainbow ends. 
and then she apparently she changed her ticket to, got it okay yeah, i misunderstood you know, life in the caribbean uh you know where you where you're you know on the ship and it's it's not a hurricane and it, you know what you scratch off three pina coladas and you win money and if you get like the triple x then it, then it adds a bonus to those three triple coladas you know so it's like having an extra shot but it, sure. you know, all those combined aren't aren't worth two hundred thousand dollars in real life so when you scratch it off in the ticket but that's just being said you know it's kind of the folly <laughs> I just like that she had her primary. I'm going to this. I've been doing this for the past 10 years. And if they don't have, if they don't have the Marlboro Reds, I'm going to the Marlboro Greens. And okay, I'm going to tap out when they get to the, I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with Benson Hedges. All right. Okay, fine, fine. Oh my God, a golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I knew my day was here. I knew it was here. Ugh, I just thought it would be in the Marlboros, you know? Um, that's, that's interesting. That's, that's, that's good yes. for her. I understand the mentality though. Cause I remember my dad, he would play every week, the same like custom lottery numbers. He would do the, mm -hmm. the main lottery. And he, like, I remember at one point, I think I was a teenager. And I said like, I was like, dad, you've been playing this since I was like a kid. You never fucking win. And I'm paraphrasing, but like, you never fucking win. Why do you keep playing the lotto? And without skipping a beat, he's like, so I know as soon as I stop playing, my numbers are going to hit. Cause he played like our birthdays. He had like his numbers that he played. He's like, as mm -hmm. soon as I stop playing, these numbers are going to hit and I'm going to fucking kill myself because I stopped playing. And I was just like, okay, superstition. I understand. Can't blame you. Yep. I, yeah, I, I feel that. Or, or you have somebody like me who in eighth grade uh, at the Westward hell, I, I forget. I think it's the cosmopolitan now. I, I don't know. But uh, we were, I was there with my great aunt, my dad, and I, you know, just seeing the Kino board, it fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And all I did was I kept track of numbers. It was like seven or eight games. And of those seven or eight games, I picked three numbers that came up the most. And I handed my dad $5 and to have him make a bet on these three things. And my dad was just like, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, it's a lesson to him. I freaking hit all three numbers. I won 210 bucks. Did he keep it? No, he came out with his hands <laughs> in his pocket, says, here you go. I can't believe you did that. Oh, you good know? for him. My dad would have kept it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And well, then my dad goes me... back in, plays Keno, doesn't win a thing. There you go. He would have at least given me back my $5 and kept the rest, or at least kept it for me. <laughs> probably. Shucks. Yeah. And I did have another friend who I said bet on the field, or I, and then I hit it, and then he, he like – He's like, okay, I bet for you. So I'm keeping this 10 bucks, but here's yours. And you know, I was like, oh, damn, thank you. That's mm -hmm. really generous. I hang out with generous people. One of I remember one time um, in Vegas, I, uh, I, I was doing something and um, I brought a friend in and dropped him off. And then he was like, I'll see you the next morning. I was like, yeah, I got you. And the next morning I picked him up and he stayed up all night playing craps and won like $800 and he still made me pay for lunch. Uh, I'm not sure if you've I've ever told you that story, Eddie. Well, that, that well, you probably you know agreed to to something, and <laughs> you know he he made good on that agreement, and you know, but as I recall, as 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 it might be presumed, I mean, he made it up later, he going did. to a restaurant. I don't know, like going to TGI Fridays, and he probably <laughs> ordered the most expensive thing on the menu, which was a Jack Daniel's. Uh, I'm just guessing here, New York Strip or something like that. I may have. I may have. If, yeah, if you haven't caught on, Eddie was the guy who won the craps. Yeah, that was an incredible night. You, was, yeah, yeah, so that was the cut, right? The context was we were doing a, a play in Pomona, California, while I was still in school in Las Vegas, because I thought that was a good idea, doing a play in Pomona while I was going to school in Vegas. And so I had to drive back after our show Thursday night so that I could do a – stage combat performance in my class Friday morning. And Eddie was like, hey, I'll come with you, make sure that you stay awake in the drive. Um, as long as like, just pay for lunch at the Mad Greek on the way back the next day. And I was like, all right, cool. Yep. So I dropped him off at like 1 a.m. at the Excalibur. And I was like, I'll pick you up. I forgot what time, I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow. And he's like, cool. And so I do my shit. I roll up the Excalibur, here he is, he gets in and I was like, how was your night? And he, he was like, I have not slept. Uh, if I recall, uh, I think he said, I, I have not slept. And I was like, oh, really? And he's like, nope, I've been at the 
craps table all night. I think you you had an encounter with a woman. Yes, I um, did. Yeah, <laughs> and and oh, he was my. like, I still remember this because it was very it was very theatrical. Maybe not on purpose. I was like, oh, how'd you do at the craps table? And you pulled out like a couple twenties. And I was like, oh, so you came up on top, and you're like, yeah. And then you reached in deeper, and it was like, fucking eight hundred dollars. <laughs> well, I Fuck. shared you. Okay. Well, here's my take on that. Okay, so I, <clears throat> I remember it was you. <clears throat> excuse me. You ho asked me, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go with you to Vegas. And I wanted to be ultra pimp because you know, I I always had my players card from back in the day. So sure. on the way there, I uh, got a hold of Excalibur. They were like, sure, we got a room for you. And, um, uh, yeah, you, you dropped me off at the Excalibur cause it's a, it's a comp room. So I go up, I just drop my stuff off or did I even bring stuff? I don't remember. And you have like and a backpack. Yeah. Something like that. I went down to the crafts table and I just keep rolling and I keep, yeah. And it's just a hot table. And then this woman in like yellow, white and yellow it's like you know stripes that are just you know kind of vertical on her walks through the pit and it's like you just don't do that yeah, uh yeah. and and everybody's looking at her but no but not even the pit boss is saying because nobody's there you know there's like three people around the table and sure, it was um, like it's like 1 30 a.m at this point yeah yeah exactly we i got there late and then she's all like um uh whatchamacallit I was like, you know, you're not supposed to walk through there. And she's like, just drunk as a skunk. She goes, hi, you're winning. Ah, you know, and then the conversation starts and yada, yada, yada. yada. And mm -hmm. I keep going. And then it was, it was just kind of this other weird thing. And it's just like, okay, I've just, I, um, no, it wasn't that time. I, I just want enough money. Right. And it's getting, it's getting early. Okay, so I just, yeah. we start like, fall, she's staying at the Luxor. And of course I think, you know, okay, maybe something's going to happen. So I start following her. We go through the casino and this couple like stops us. And I thought she knew the couple and it's just, and they buy us drinks. And I'm like, okay, I'll have a pina colada. And we start drinking. And then I'm, I'm kind of clueless at this point. I don't know what's going on because I think she's the, they're, they're friends and stuff like that. But sure. it turns out, I think they were like looking for an encounter. That's what I, I was, think so were, you never told me this part of the story, but, but really? absolutely. If a random couple stops you in the casino and buys you a drink, they're absolutely looking for a fuck. Like they're absolutely yeah. looking for something. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was kind of, I was just into her. It was like kind of an, it was, it was one of those attractions. Well, she's there, you know, and everything. I want, so end up, it ended up not, not being a go. Okay. So we go off on our own way and she kind of says this Nebraska woman says, you know, blah, blah, blah to me. And then we go, we're uh, going back to Luxor and we actually meet back up at the tram and uh, you know, the men go into their restroom, women go into their restroom. And then uh, she decides, oh, let's walk. Let's not take the tram. Let's not take the tram. And then uh, they, so this other couple, they took the tram back. And as we're walking down, she looks back, doesn't see her. She goes, oh my God, we're in the bathroom. She tried to put her finger in my pussy, you know? <laughs> I remember that for some reason. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I draw her back and I was like, am I really going up to your room? I was like, okay, are we, we going to hang out? Or are you like tired? And she's like, no, I'm tired. I'm just going to go. I was like, okay, it's a wonderful moment. We just share a kiss. I go back up to the room. And before I went down to that craps table, I set an alarm and I lay in the bed and I'm in there. Mm. Not a lot of time. Then the alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, I look at the phone and it's like, okay, he's going to call. Well, okay. You know? And so then I go back down and I remember taking that said, I was like, okay, this is what I started with. Okay. Right, here's what I made. Yeah. Something like that. And then, yeah, I go into the Mad Greek. And it's like, well, no, you said you would buy lunch. So no, like, I know, I know what I said. I'm just saying uh, uh, <laughs> the facts have changed. The situation has changed. That was awesome. That was I, awesome. What's really? funny, and, and you were actually here for that when you were saying like you were, you were naive to the fact that this this couple might have been trying to swing with you guys. Yeah. Um, do you remember my first night in Vegas when you came out? Uh, was that with? Me? Sure. No, no, no. So, so I, when I first went to school in Vegas, I, I think I, I drove out there like on a Tuesday or Wednesday, I forgot what night, and you had already apparently had plans to stay there. Oh, that's separate right. Yes, from yes, me. Yes. yes. So you, I think you came out like a day early. I think you, you spent points like at your, your suite at the wind or whatever. It was at, it was at the Venetian. Yes. Venetian. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, or whatever. And so then, 
So I, I still remember too, because I, I, I just literally moved to Vegas like the day before. And so you're like, let's go hang out at the strip. I'm like, cool. So I come up, like I have like a fucking t-shirt on. I don't, I don't know what the hell's going on. So you gave me a, a shirt that like zipped up in the front, which I still have. It's still in my fucking closet. It's like a beige colored shirt. Yeah, okay. yeah. You have that shirt? I was wondering. I thought somebody else took it. <laughs> no, I thought I thought the woman took it. You, you <laughs> gave it to me because you because okay. what you said was like you're not walking the strip in what you're wearing because like, I had just, like a t-shirt on. <laughs> I was fucking 21 t-shirt. I don't I didn't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gave me that shirt. I'm like, cool. So we walk out. You're right. It was a Venetian. And so we walked out. And I remember, like, there's, like, a, one of those automatic walkways. Yeah, I remember this. And yeah. I glance. And so you know where this is going. So I glance. And there's two women. Well, I, I should say girls. Yeah. Just, just eyeing me. And I was like, oh, this is Vegas, of course. And I was like, I'm young. I look good. Hell uh-huh. yeah. Eddie's shirt is coming through. People are <laughs> checking me out. And, and so I remember we got, we got off the side, the, the, the walkway thing. And I kind of walk over there and you're behind me. And the whole time just locked eyes. And I was like, all right, this is happening. So we start, <laughs> we start chatting and she's like, yeah. And like, we're just talking. She's like, where are you going? And I was like, well, me and him, we're about to get some food over at the uh, Mirage or the pirate uh, treasure Island. Sorry. They're about to get some food over there. You should come with us. And she's like, well, um, how about this? How about I give you my number? And after you get an eating, you hit me up and we'll hang out. And I was like, well, you need to come with us and get some drinks. And, sit. and then I think, I remember at the time I was glancing at you and you were not into it. You were just like, no. And I was like, fuck is wrong with Eddie? These chicks are down. <laughs> and so it was the line I still remember. I think she said, we're not the company that goes to dinner with you. We're the company that tucks you in at night. And it clicked. And I was like, Ah, this bitch is not into me. She's working. Yep. And I was like, oh. And that's when I glanced at you again. And you're just sitting there like, mm. you're just sitting there like, yep. And I was like, okay. And I think I got her number. We walked away. And I was like, I, I, I forgot what we said to each other, but I was like, okay, got it. Got mm-hmm. it. All right. First time as a 21 year old, I understand I'm not attractive. She was looking for a payout. <laughs> exactly. Things like that happen. It was just yeah, funny. Well, like, I, I no. could read the game because of the come on. And it's little things like that. Like um, what really gave it away for me is that she was wearing a lot of body spray or it, it wasn't perfume. It was body spray. And it was just so much of it. Mm. And I was like, ah, that's the deviation that, that, that doesn't make sense. Not here. And the fact that, you know, she's where she's sitting and completely off. It's like, I know this. It's like, ah, let them have fun. Now. Yeah, no, yeah. It was just funny to me because when you talked about the couple, how you didn't really understand what was going on with the couple until later, that's what yeah. reminded me about this chick outside the casino. Like, oh, I thought funny. I was hot shit, and it was just this bitch trying to get a payday, which she would have been disappointed because I was a broke college student. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't afford a hand job, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe. Maybe a four and a half. Maybe, maybe. If you're lucky and you, you know, she doubled the coupon. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say, if, she had the, if I had a coupon, then, then maybe. Exactly. <laughs> well, this is good uh, stories. Uh, yeah. We're, we're gonna. Are we gonna focus on like kind of shorter snippets? Because I know you had. Uh, you said you had your bit that you're gonna or bit or kind of side that you're gonna do. So. No, no. I think I think uh, I'm good. Okay. So you yeah. want to you want to keep rolling, or do you want to cut it here and just tell people to come back next week? Let's just come back next week because. Uh, All right, come back next week. I think, and I'm not going to cut anything. They, they hear our conversation. They hear our development. Uh, Mitch, and, Mitch and I talked about getting shorter episodes as well, so this uh, fits the strategy. Absolutely. Okay, um, so so we fade out here. Yes. So thank you, everybody, thank for joining you. Eddie and me in our our Zoom session. Yeah, our Zoom um, session. So the, no structure. It's just I nope. I show up and just said hey. Here's what I'm drinking. Did I drink any of it? No, because I didn't drink the Coke. I've got freaking, I've got uh, Jack's, a single uh, Jack's, uh, Gentleman Jack and water, because I forgot the Coke in the other room. I'm not going to run away from the camera. And this where it's going to stay. Did you put water in there or did you just put it with a I lot of ice? I put ice and, it, okay. and it's melted in the time. Well, we well I was going to say, Grand Gentleman Jack, you shouldn't put a lot of ice in it. But if you didn't put any water in it, I guess that, that gets pretty cool. So. Yeah. Some yeah. people like the Jack. I'm not one of them. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you everyone for joining us thank in our, our meanderings. Us. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll thank see you, you next time. Thank you.